Hello, welcome to Fundamentals of Biostatistics. I'm going to be your instructor. My name is Tony DeVito. You can see a few of uh, pictures of some of my side interests, personal interests, hobbies, and so on and so forth. Uh, probably the information that's more relevant to you is a little bit of my background. Uh, I've been doing this for quite a while, so, so I have a bit of experience making sure that you guys can keep up and maybe helping you get through this course. Um, my day job involves mostly environmental testing, water, and air testing. Um, particularly these days, I'm involved with uh, testing cooling towers and sanitizing them uh, to prevent the spread of Legionnaires' disease. So I've, you know, we've seen that get into the news a little bit. Uh, maybe we'll get a chance to talk about that a little bit. I also do a little bit of teaching at Rutgers as well in their OSHA. In one of the things we want to discuss for starters is what exactly is an online course. Uh, most of you are familiar with what we call brick-and-mortar courses, where uh, you actually uh, go to a school, you sit in a classroom, you have a lecture at the front of the room. We've done that plenty here. I'm sure many of us have also attended those kind of classes, of course. Uh, this course is a bit different. It's strictly online. It's a completely online course. The materials are uh, stored in the cloud, so to speak, on Blackboard, on uh, uh, on YouTube, in various areas of the internet where we can access it. The nice thing about that is is that you get a chance to take this course at your own pace to work on the evenings that you want to, at, from your home, from wherever it's convenient, if you're on the road. Uh, the downside of that is, is that it takes a bit of discipline because since you won't be showing up to a classroom at a specific time, each week you have to manage yourself and manage your own time and that can be pretty challenging in these courses sometimes but that's that's really the key to it being successful make sure that you manage to keep up with the course as it's going on because once you fall behind it's going to be even eat harder for you to really apply yourself and catch up again so much of the material is given in the sequence that will help you understand it uh, the best so we're going to be covering uh, uh, how to analyze, present, interpret data. Uh, we're going to be learning all those important common statistical concepts, uh, uh, learning about the normal distribution, about probability, hypothesis testing, how to test the significance of result. Uh, and we'll, we'll be doing a lot of other uh, important uh, exercises that'll wind up being things that are building blocks for things that you're going to be using and uh, doing as you go forward in public health or epidemiology or whatever area of uh, this study that you uh, wind up in. Okay, now this course is going to be taught through video lectures that you'll be able to play, uh, through exercises and demos, which also are presented as videos, uh, and materials that will test your knowledge of the material that you were watching as you progress through it. Okay, there'll also be some homework assignments that you have to submit as well. Uh, now, you're going to use uh, some materials for this, including uh, uh, Excel and a program called SPSS. We'll get into uh, what these uh, programs are and how you'll access them shortly. Okay, so what do you need to know taking this course? Now, I've noticed some of the descriptions of the prerequisites include things like uh, elementary statistics or some calculus or some equivalent. Um, I think really just if you have a fairly comfortable attitude towards learning a little bit of math, uh, we're really not going to get involved in anything that involves calculus, certainly. And um, I'm going to assume that if you have taken some statistics before, that you have no memory of it. So I'm really going to start you from pretty much the beginning. Uh, now, I'll try also, for those of you that have a, a bit more experience with statistics, I'll try to give you some exercises occasionally here and there that'll challenge you a little bit as well so that we don't lose your interest as well. But if you're a beginner, if you're not familiar with Excel, you haven't used it very much, if you've never seen SPSS or statistical programs before, you should not be scared of this course. We're going to take this at a pace and uh, in a manner that will help you keep up with it, keep up with the material so that we don't lose you. But it's important that you do your part and keep up week to week with the work that's assigned. Okay, so really you need to use a computer, you need access to e email, uh, and you have to check it regularly. Uh, you, uh, you have to have to use your web browser for searching for information on the internet, for accessing Blackboard, which is an important part of this course. 
and we're going to talk about the other software that you need as well. So how is this course going to work? Well, it's going to be taught through a series of online lectures and recordings, online exercises, uh, demonstrations, uh, discussions that you'll have with students and with me through uh, discussion forums on Blackboard, individual assignments. We're also going to have two online exams and there'll be a course project. Okay, we'll discuss that as we get into the semester. Don't get too worried about it right now. We'll have plenty of time to prepare for that. At this stage, you're going to want to know what you're going to need for this course yourselves. First thing you're going to need is access to Blackboard, and you'll need to check it on a regular basis, like every day or two, to make sure you keep up with announcements and new material that might wind up there. Uh, we're going to be using a test textbook associated with this course. The good news about this textbook is it's open source. Open source means that it's been created with an open source license by a group of uh, statistical professors that have made this available to students like yourselves for free. So the textbook won't cost you anything. You can download it as a PDF uh, t uh, document from this, this website, openintro.org. Uh, if you prefer to have it as a uh, printed document, you can do that for as low as uh, about 7 or $8 or up to about $30 for a uh, uh, color version of the uh, textbook and it looks just like a regular textbook would look. I, I think you'll be impressed with it and I think it's uh, served us well in the last couple of years. So uh, you certainly want to get hold of that textbook as soon as you can so you can start working on some of the readings getting familiar with it. Uh, we're going to be using software in this course. Uh, the first thing we're going to be using is a spreadsheet uh, program, uh, preferably Excel. There are others that will serve just as well, but most of us like to use Excel. It's available. Uh, it's easily accessible. Many of us have it already. Um, it's also available through the uh, Hunter uh, uh, Academic website uh, where you can get a student discount for the uh, Microsoft Office products. Uh, we're also going to be using Microsoft Word. Again, you could use another text editor or uh, word processing program if you want to, but most people wind up using uh, Word if they buy it as part of that package. The third piece of software, which most of you will not have been exposed to before, is something called uh, a, a form of vertical software, something, a piece of software that has a specific function. And in our case, that software is called SPSS. There's other programs like it that you may have heard of, SAS. There's a program called R, which happens to be open source as well. Uh, but SPSS has worked, served very well for students that are taking introductory biostatistics courses because it's really pretty easy to learn. And many of the functions are menu-driven, so you don't have to learn very much programming. But there are uh, 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 elements of it can, that are quite sophisticated, so as you learn it, the time you invest in learning it is going to pay off in the long run for you as well. Uh, it's available through the Hunter website at a discounted uh, uh, price. It's also available directly from a website called onthehub.com. Um, there's many versions of it. The least expensive version uh, will be perfectly adequate for this course. That's about $45. Uh, there's a slightly more expensive version. That, that version is called the, the base, basic or base version. There's a slightly more expensive version of it that costs about $15 more for a six-month license that uh, includes something called logistic uh, regression. Okay, we're going to be talking about that a little bit towards the very, very end of the semester. Uh, you're not likely to be required to do any exercises with it or use it for your project. So if you think you might be interested in that, you might want to spec spend the extra 10 or 15 bucks. Uh, uh, or if you think you're going to be using the software in other courses for more advanced stuff, it may be uh, 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 advisable to do that. Or you may prefer to do that. But certainly for this particular course, the most, the least expensive version, about $45, will be adequate for what we need to do. Uh, just make sure that when you go on that website that you order the correct version for your computer. If you have a Mac, you order the Mac version. If you have a PC, you order the Windows version. Uh, almost all of the computers throughout the um, uh, CUNY facilities 
have SPSS, Excel, and Word installed on them, but I really encourage you students, especially the ones that don't feel very comfortable with math or with uh, some of these more sophisticated computer programs that you get it onto your own machine so you have a chance to really practice with it. Um, it'll really pay off in the long run rather than relying on the machines uh, uh, that you might have to go out of your way to to get to at school. Uh, one other thing is, is that students that are in the public health program here at Hunter uh, are required to take a course for a certificate in ethics in human research. Um, you can imagine that there's you've read of and you've heard of uh, a lot of uh, uh, questionable tactics uh, and uh, 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 dangers that subjects in human research experiments have been exposed to. Uh, and we certainly want you to understand what the hazards are, what the rules are uh, uh, when you're involved with uh, handling humans in uh, research projects, uh, collecting data from humans, uh, and handling the data uh, to protect their identities as well. So that is an online course. Uh, it takes about three to six hours of reading with a few short quizzes that are involved. To complete the course, at the end of it, you'll be able to print out a certificate, upload it to Blackboard, so that I know you've completed it. Some of you are from outside the CUNY system. Um, you may not need to do this, but it's worth doing anyway. I think you'll find the readings very interesting. Because you may not have taken part in an online course before, I just wanted to reiterate that in-class attendance is not required. Technology can fail occasionally. So sometimes maybe we'll have a little bit of trouble recording those. Sometimes uh, you may have some access problems with Blackboard from, day, from period to period. Don't worry about it. We always manage to get these things to work out, so don't get discouraged if you wind up with a few problems on your computer or we wind up with a few problems on Blackboard. Uh, we'll manage to figure all this stuff out in the long run. Okay, so now you're probably saying to yourself, well, what do I do from this point on? Well, while you're waiting for the first week's material to appear on Blackboard on Monday, uh, you might consider, well, two options. One option is don't do anything. Enjoy your last weekend before class. Uh, go to Blackboard on Monday for the uh, lecture. Watch the demos and do the lab exercises. Uh, take a look at your first assignments. Uh, participate in the uh, discussion forums that are going to be posted there as well. Okay, so that's one option is that you can relax. Uh, we do have the Monday session coming up, and you can catch up with us then. Okay, the other option is that uh, you might want to actually, you know, spend this time getting a little bit qu acquainted with uh, Blackboard. Go to the Blackboard site, download the syllabus, read the syllabus. Uh, you can let me know if you see any inconsistencies in the syllabus. Send me an email, and I'll uh, be updating and correcting it as it needs it uh, during the first couple of weeks of the semester as we work things out. Um, you might want to also get download and get acquainted with the textbook, maybe even read uh, a, a bit of the first chapter or two. Okay, you'll get, you may want to get started on that city program certificate if uh, uh, you're likely to be in a program that's going to require it, basically anybody that's involved uh, in the CUNY pro graduate programs in public health. Okay, so that'll give you a little bit of a, uh, a leg up because the last thing you want to do is have to, under pressure, get that six hours, five or six hours of reading uh, done and get that certificate done late in the semester when you have lots of other work to do. So you might want to get started on that even before the semester gets started. Uh, if you get an opportunity, you might make sure you have access to Excel and purchase and download SPSS. And one other thing that we'd like you to do, and that is go to Blackboard, go to the discussions forum, and you'll see a new forum on there, a new thread on there, that asks you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, put a few lines in there that tells us about how you wound up in public health, what your interests are, what you're looking forward to in the uh, future. Um, I don't want to pry if you feel that you're a bit shy or uh, this, you don't want to share personal information. Just go on there and say hi, okay, so that uh, at least we get the, um, ex we have the exercise of going onto the discussion groups, 
uh, creating a thread and actually adding something to it so that you know how it works because that's going to be an important means of communication and a, a mechanism for you to get help on the exercises, on the homework assignments, on the projects from your fellow students and from me as well. Okay, so we want you to learn how to use that discussion forums. Uh, for this exercise, uh, if you feel comfortable with it, please go on and uh, 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 share some information about yourself. You'll see it when you get on. There'll be further instructions. Uh, also, I'd like you to also go on to uh, read other postings by other students so you make uh, at least two replies to other students so you know how to reply to a thread someone else has created. Okay, so post for yourself, create a thread and post for yourself and um, uh, uh, go on to at least two other students or as many as you want beyond two and uh, you may want to exchange information with them or uh, 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 or acknowledge what they've uh, mentioned or maybe share some common interests or something like that okay so one th one create your own thread and reply to at least two others so we know that you're comfortable using the blackboard discussion forum Okay, you have, until, you have until the end of the first week of classes to do that so we know that you're actually being able to uh, complete that little preview assignment that we have. Okay, so there's a few rules in this course. First rule is don't panic. I know for many of you, uh, math itself can be a little bit of a challenge. You might not, not because you're not intelligent enough to do it, certainly, if you've gotten to this point, but it's just one of those subjects that a lot of people feel uncomfortable with. Um, you may not feel comfortable with Excel, but trust me, it's a lot simpler to use, particularly for the kind of work that we're going to be doing with it than you, would, than, uh, you may anticipate. And SPSS, even though it's a, a very sophisticated statistical program, uh, uh, there's going to be a lot of easy ways to use, get it to do some very interesting and very sophisticated things. And you'll have no trouble with that, I'm sure. Okay. Second rule, keep up with the course. That's really important, particularly with an online course where you're not uh, going into a classroom and sitting in a seat and having to show up and hand in an assignment every week in person, and you don't have FaceTime with the professor in person. So we really need you to keep up with the course. Uh, and the third thing is, is that between your fellow students and I, if you run into trouble or difficulty, we have the discussion forums, you have email, we have ways, uh, re uh, other videos on YouTube and various other sources of information I can port point you to to get you help. So our, our, our motto in this course is no man gets left behind. We're going to make sure we all get through this course as long as we're willing to put in the work. Okay, so I'm really looking forward to an interesting uh, semester, a rewarding experience. This is a bit of a new thing. It's completely, I've done hybrid courses before, but a completely online uh, session like this is a little bit different uh, for me as for, well as for many of you. So I'm really looking forward to this. And I'm really looking forward to meeting you guys online, perhaps also in person on a couple, one of these Thursdays. So... Have a great weekend before the start of the semester this coming Monday. Bye.